Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. My name is Hannah and I am recording this podcast in Northern Tasmania, Australia. Welcome and um, thank you for taking the time to watch. I will keep the introduction short this time because last time the episode was quite long and it takes a lot of time to do the editing and everything and I think um, I just get carried away talking sometimes if I have the time and it's not really necessary. So just um, quickly, I'll put all the information at the start, I think, of this episode of where you can find me, but I'm Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram, and I'm easily, um, you can easily get hold of me in either of those places if you have any questions or comments. I have started um, to put a few links to things I talk about in our Ravelry group, Rose Hip Needs Podcast Ravelry group. And um, for every episode, I post a thread with a link to the podcast on YouTube and also a few links to things that I have been talking about. Mostly it's links to my projects in Ravelry because I do keep fairly good track of things on there. And um, yeah, so you can always go to my project pages in Ravelry if you want to know more information about anything that I show you. Okay, um, we have a sunny, glorious day here today, which we really need because we've had a lot of rain, hailstorms, wind, and horrible weather. It's spring here. Today, the birds are um, twerping and they're happy and it's sunny and it's, it's wonderful. Excuse me. And... Um, as often happens, my uh, youngest daughter is uh, asleep after lunch and that's when I find time to record and um, my eldest is in school and in about 45 minutes I'm off to pick her up so I have a limit to how much time I have today which can be good. and. Um, it's not nap time only for my daughter now. I also have a baby lamb here um, at our home who's having a nap as well after her lunch. Uh, yes, what's happened last week is that um, we uh, took on an orphan lamb from my in-law's farm. So it's a little one week old lamb now who needs to be bottle fed and um, her name is Charlotte <laughs> and um, yes she's living with us and it's going really well and the girls love her and I think she loves the girls too so uh, we're having lots of fun with that and it's it's a very nice experience we'll see what it's like in another month or so and we'll see what it's like when she'll be returning um, to the farm so but that's very exciting and I'm sure I'll have um, cute photos and videos somewhere in this episode and uh, yes that's what's been happening here. Today I have knitting to talk about. I have finished a few things and I'm working on a few things so I'd like to uh, show those to you and um, I have been doing some dyeing and I do have an Etsy shop, Rosie Island. Um, there will be a shop up update soon. I'm thinking this weekend. So today I think it's the 19th of October. It's a Wednesday. So 19th, 22nd or so. This weekend I'll, um, I'll do a shop update and there will be a little bit of everything. Um, but what I was going to say with that is that I, I, I'll have a shop update, but I won't show you um, things today really. But I have been um, trying some cold water dyeing and um, I'll just talk a, a little bit about that towards the end of this episode because that's just um, a new experience and a new uh, thing that I've tried that I'd like to share with you. If you're interested okay um, let's 
move on to some finished knitting. Okay. So what have I finished? First of all, I finished my vanilla socks. The reason these socks look funny is because I made these sock blockers myself and the heels and things are not shaped properly. But they, they work for showing what the socks looks like. So these socks are just plain vanilla. I did them cuff down on my nine inch circulars and um, I did a short row heel from the Sock Architecture book by Lara Neal and then um, just a, a normal wedge toe, I think they're called. I used a narrow version of the short row heel on these socks and that seems to have worked well. The yarn is um, a sock wool from Bendigo Woolen Mills that I picked up from their online store quite a while ago. I did see it in the back room when I was there earlier this year. Um, I think this sock yarn is very similar to the Heirloom Jigsaw brand. I think it actually is the same thing. It is a nice standard sock yarn and it um, holds up quite well. I like these socks now. I didn't think they were too exciting to knit, this striping, this colourway, but they're nice and I do like them. I tried to make them match, which means that I did the cuff on the second sock a little bit shorter because I wanted the stockinette part to start at the same point. So you can see that this one here has a little bit of a longer cuff, which is fine. I think they'll be for me. I'm not sure. They might be a present for someone. So this is the sock yarn that I use. This is what I have left. So this is the Bendigo Woolen Mills Sock Wool 4 ply, shade 252, 75% wool, 25% nylon. And uh, yes, a finished pair of socks. And then another thing that you saw last time was this shawl that I made, a design by Alpaca Anna. And it's called the Butterfly Friendship Shawl. And it's done and it's really big. Like my shawls always seems to end up being. So I've used the Peyton's Dreamtime commercial baby wool for the main part here. And then for these sections down here in the border, I've used my own hand dyed Oz fingering. And you can see that. It's hard to see here maybe, but there's actually butterfly down the last section. And so I have blocked this. I've not actually worn it yet. Um, because it is quite large and I wanted to keep it nice uh, for photos. But yes, this will be nice and cosy. And I think that's that's how I'll wear it. So I'm I'm really happy with this shawl and it was a really enjoyable pattern uh, to knit. I did it in less than a month and I think if it had not been a test knit I would have preferred to have a bit longer to <laughs> knit on it because it was a little bit manic at times. Um, but it is a really beautiful shawl and um, I, I like the, the yarn that I used. Um, the Payton's Dreamtime is a 100% wool baby yarn, they call it. And it's a super wash. And this is colour 3884. And the other one that I used was my own hand dyed Oz fingering. Um, yes, yeah, so that's done and the pattern is now released and you can purchase it on Ravelry. 
and I I thought I had used more yarn than the pattern um, called for but I actually didn't it calls for I think 400 meters um, and I was just thinking 100 grams but I used about 120 maybe of of this patent stream time but it has quite a short a meter rich uh, per 100 grams so it was still less than 400 meters that I used I really like it and it's so nice and soft and snuggly and I think um, these colors are quite good now for for the spring and summer when there's a bit of a, a cooler day so that's that one and then I immediately I did think okay do not sign up for any more test knits now Hannah I do enjoy them I really do but sometimes it's a little bit more um, stressed than I need to have have the deadline because I really want to finish in time however on the same day that I finished this test knit um, I saw on Instagram a call for test knitters for a fingerless mitt and I thought oh, fingerless mitt I can do and it was a pretty long time to complete the test knit so I am um, signed up for a child size I thought I can do that easily so then I made these so these are the Badland mitts I think they're called yes Badland mitts and I can't remember the name of the designer but I'll, I'll put it down here these were so much fun to knit um, and quick really really quick I really enjoyed how they were constructed I really like um, the look of the finished mitt I should try to insert some photos of my daughter wearing them I'm sorry there's a big truck outside I have the door open because it's so nice today um, yes yeah, so I have photos of my six-year-old wearing them but also my three-year-old wearing them and there might even be a lamb in that photo so that's them the yarn that I used was some leftovers for a pair of socks that I made and I can show you the socks because I got them out of my sock drawer. So the yarn is a Drops Fable sock yarn and um, I think it's the long colour, long print or something, it has long colour repeats. I can't remember, it's a while ago. Um, these are the socks that I made out of that. Yeah, here comes the track again. And um, this was a test knit I did quite some time ago. And these socks and a couple of other pairs of very patterned socks were what made me decide not only to make plain vanilla socks or really basic socks because it's a lot of time that goes into these socks when it's like it keeps changing what you're doing for every uh, round and uh, yes. so socks I don't think I need very fancy socks like that I don't think I've ever worn these they're a bit too long for me but it was a test knit so I just followed the pattern they're nice um, they might be a present for someone one day because yes and they need to go to someone with larger feet than mine. <laughs> okay, sorry, my camera keeps shutting off today. I think I fixed it now. So out of one ball of Fable, Drops Fable, I got a pair of socks that are quite large size and tall and a pair of these child size Badland mitts. And um, I still have a ton of it left. These use 20 grams. And I used a two millimeter needle. I went down quite a bit in the size of my needle because I am a loose knitter, but they're very stretchy and they fit perfectly. I actually think that these are my new pattern that I use for using up quite a, a few of my leftover bits that I have after making socks. I like to make a pair for me, and I think they'll be a good pattern um, to make mitts for presents as well. So yes, I'm 
really really happy with them my girls are really happy with them I think they'll be fighting over them so I'll be making another pair shortly it is spring it will be summer they won't need them for a while but um, I think I still need to um, make a second pair and these the pattern has the sizes from toddler up to like a large um, adult size so I'll let you know when the pattern is released and yes I should have put the designer of them on the screen at um, some point okay so that's um, three item that I finished so that's quite good um, I am still working on my other socks that I had started last time these are my Halloween socks and uh, I have this is out of my trick or treat yarn. This is the um, Tasmanian Ethical Superfine Merino, the white gum wool base, the merino and nylon base. Um, and I'm just making a pair of vanilla socks. So since last time, I have turned the heel and I'm working on the leg. And I'm really enjoying them. They're so nice to knit because it is such a soft yarn. Um, I think the shape of them is a little bit funny. I made the toe very wide, but that would be fine. And um, I had to redo the the heel because I messed it up. And the second time it was messed up again, but I just sort of fixed it and kept going. It is again the short row heel by Lara Neal. The Sock Architecture book is where you can find it. I was planning to do another heel. I felt like trying something different. But by the time I just, um, it was time to do the heel, I had already worked all the way up to where I'd put in a short row heel. And really, if I was going to do a, a heel with a gusset or a different type of heel, I would have um, had to stop earlier of knitting the foot. So I decided to go with the shorter heel again and um, next time I'll try something different so I've been working on these a little bit mostly when I have sort of just had um, a few minutes to grab some knitting and, and work, on, um, work on a little bit or if I've been out and I could bring knitting with me uh, but so it's finishing those other items, the main thing I have been working on is in my Knit and Stitch Bits bag. Um, it's my praline cardigan. You have seen this before, I have worked on this for over a year now. And when um, Yarn 30 podcast started the Graveyard Cow, I think it's called, where you you meant to finish a project that you have not touched for a really long time. And I decided that my praline cardigan was the thing that it was time to finish. But then I've had these test knits and things, so I haven't really been able to work on it until now. And the cow ends at the end of this month, end of October. But I have decided that that's okay. The cow made me work on it again. And I would like to have this off the needles by the end of the year. So I have worked a little bit on it. What I am knitting it out of is um, Sandness Garn Mini Duet, which is a 55 cotton and 45 um, merino. It's a fingering weight and it's a Scandinavian yarn. I have started on the sleeves. I'm doing two at a time. And I only started this a couple of nights ago, I think. I haven't worked on it very much. Oh, I did I start it last night? Anyway, now that I'm working in the round, this is going much faster. The body is now sitting on a needle, resting. I have bound off for the sleeves. Oh, this is a bit hard to show you. But this is the cardigan with the pockets. 
it has waist shaping and now I bound off here on the side so where the sleeves will go sorry this is a little bit tricky to show you now the sun is disappearing that might be better so that's one side of it the back yes so I've put it down while working on the sleeves I'm hoping the sleeves will not take forever <laughs> but it might take a while I, I I'm not sure what the fit will be like I I'm sure this was so long ago that I started it I'm sure I did a gauge watch and everything to figure out my size but with this cotton merino yarn I think it's ending up I don't know loose and I don't think I could knit it any tighter it would be too painful for my hands really with that cotton um, it just seems quite loose but it's okay we'll see we'll see what happens and that reminds me that um, I can tell you that what I'm wearing today is the cotton cardigan that I, I made over six years ago now uh, it's made out of the Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton I think no sorry it's heirloom so it's like that um, it's the same as the Bendigo uh, Woolen Mills cotton brand but this is it's spun at Bendigo Woolen Mills but it's under a different yarn brand uh, so this is the black and this is a pattern cardigan pattern I think it's called hope cardigan and it's from a um, Australian knitting magazine yarn magazine I have this in my Ravelry project pages and I have everything linked there I really like this cardigan I think it's the only cardigan I've ever knit and I haven't knit many cardigans but anyway uh, it's the best fit and I would really like to make another one in wool because even though it's um, it's really nice to wear this and everything it just takes a long time to dry when I've washed it now someone is mowing the grass I might have to go and close the door um, before finishing up okay and um, I do also have the moon raker shawl by Melanie Berg that I'm working on I might just, uh, it's in my craftfulness bag that I really love and I have I have actually ordered another one that I'm waiting for to arrive. Um, it's taking a long time though. I really feel how I'm living far away from the rest of the world sometimes. Um, this is the Moon Raker Shore that I have uh, only done a few more rows on. But that's happening as well. So I might might cast on another project or two but I'll try to finish things that I'm working on um, before the end of the year <laughs> okay mm. we'll see how much more time we have I don't have um, a heap more time but a little bit more um, I actually um, was very lucky to receive a gorgeous present in the mail since the last podcast and that was from a dear friend of mine um, online and it's this skein of skein oh upside down is it uh yes yeah, so this is the top drawer sock which i have really wanted to try and this is just um a beautiful colorway it's rocky road so Thank you so much dear friend I think I will have to make a pair of socks I think because I've heard a lot of good things about this sock base this yarn base and um, yes socks okay so I might insert some cute lamb photos and um, then I'll be back to talk about some cold water dyeing Well, Mama. Hi. Sweet. 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 
Okay, so since the last time I um, recorded a podcast, I uh, have been trying some new dyeing methods or a new dyeing method. When I went to the Australian Sheep and Wool show in July, I took the opportunity to buy some Earth Palette dyes, which is a cold water dye powder. I am no expert at this and I don't know how it works chemically, but you don't need heat to set these dyes. Um, I think you need like room temperature for 24 hours, but of course it will d depend on a few different things, but you can see if the dye is absorbed and you, you can leave it for longer. If it's a really hot day and you leave it out in a plastic bag or a plastic container, it might take uh, shorter than 24 hours. Um, I have tried this method once before at a dye workshop at the Guild in Hobart and I am um, I really enjoyed that workshop and it's the first dyeing I ever did, I think. And I really liked how you didn't have to heat set um, the dyes. And since so starting dyeing the white gum wool base, that is quite sensitive to heat and also it's hard to get it to absorb a lot of dye. I thought that this sort of dyeing might be a good fit for that yarn base. And um, I think it's the lady of Mostly Wool who's recently bought Earth Palette um, company and she's now doing these and um, she had them at the show in Bendigo and um, I so this one this is a brown and orange I chose to some colors that I don't have a lot of that I don't normally dye very much because I want to do different things and um, after having a lot of rainy and cold days, we had a day when um, it was quite warm because I've been holding on to these for a while thinking this is something I need to do in spring and summer when it's warm. And um, But I did have a day when I thought it would be uh, warm enough and I tried those two dyes. And I tried them on the um, Tasmanian Ethical Merino, the, Bendi uh, the white gum wool base. And I only did really weak. What the instructions for these say is to mix them in water and then you do, use the, the dye stock to dye with a little bit at a time. I didn't do that. I just did a very weak dye solution that I put the yarn in. So this was the, the orange dye, which has come out a yellow. It's, it's looking paler on a screen than um, what it is to me in real life and then uh, this was the brown and the brown is a beautiful sort of sandstone color with a bit of a green tint to it I really really like this one and um, I just I was just trying it out see how it work unfortunately on the day when I thought it was quite warm and nice it wasn't warm enough so when after 24 hours I um, I rinsed them the dye had not set, so I um, I steamed them to heat set them in the end, and that worked. So I'll be waiting a bit longer before I do any more cold water dyeing. I just need um, warmer weather, I think. Oh no, it's raining outside. Um, yes, but that's something I've I've tried, and I'm, I'm planning to do more of that. And I have to set up a system, but I think it would be quite good not needing the heat and just, um, I think I'll be using, well, I will be using containers that I can reuse. I don't like the idea of using plastic bags and new plastic bag every time I die. It will mean that I'll probably do smaller batches, maybe just one skein for each die bath for each container not sure how it will work and uh, I'll figure something out but it's so much fun to try something new and if you're new to dyeing I would say that uh, the cold water dye with earth palette dyes is a really good way to start um, because it's quite easy and yes you can get beautiful colors if you look at the colors that um, mostly will mostly park I'll put the right um, 
name in, in this, on the screen. Uh, her colorways that she's getting using the Earth palette colors are just amazing. So yes, that's something. And then last, before I have to go and do school pickup, <laughs> is um, the minis that I have been working on. I have told you before that I've been working on, on creating new mini sets. So I've got the fi first five done. So there are the first five. And then I have another five that I need to do up. And that's those ones. So it's just a bit of a mix of different I like to do quite a variation within the sets. Uh, yes, I have a new self striping that I've added here. And it's this one. So this is the Hobart colorway. Hobart to me is a very marine, um, bluish in grays. Yes, but now I better head off. So the really shop update on the weekend. I will have the mini sets, the self striping, a whole lot of other sock yarns and other super wash yarns and some of the Tasmanian ethical merino. So check that out if, if you are after some nice wool. I hope there's been some nice cute photos of our lamb Charlotte in this episode. Um, I'm sorry if it's been a bit rushed. So everyone, take care. I'm so happy you're here with me and um, taking your time again to watch. So um, have a great time until I see you next time and take care. Thank you. Bye.